I only wanted Rudolph to have more than I did. You gotta understand, I was a nothing. A no deer. I was never gonna pull a Santa sleigh. I have a bad back, and I'm not a strong flyer. And I smoke. I was an unemployed herd deer. In fact, I'm fired from my last job, and once work gets around, it can't handle hard work. You're through. So when the vets came to me and told me my son was going to be born like he was, Rudolph probably never walked without crutches. that it would be horribly disfigured with a face no doe would ever love. And even though he would have the mind of a child all his life. And when they told me that my mate and I shouldn't try to have another because our children would all be like that. Corey was terribly upset. But that was the end for me. That was the end of my life. You see, every parent has dreamed for their child. Dreams that won't ever happen. That their son will grow up to be President of the United States. That their daughter will grow up to be the president's wife. Crazy outlandish dreams. And sometimes when your life was where mine was, the only thing that makes you go on is that dream and the hope that your kids will be better off than you were. That crazy parental optimism is what keeps you going through the bad times when it's struggle just to put feet on the table. Because you know, even if you never amount to anything, at least your offsprings have a, a world of possibilities before them. And it's worth leaving another day. It's worth living another day. Just see what they do with it. Rudolph didn't have any possibilities. From the moment of his birth, there was no wide open country stretched out before him alive with promise, only closed doors. You gotta understand, our whole culture is based on natural athleticism. A deer who can't run or jump or dance or pull a sleigh or just stand there and look sexy in leather and sleigh bells it's better off dead if Rudolph were a domestic deer they would have shot him put him out of his misery 
only future he had was the burden to his parents. Who overburdened enough as it was. So when Santa gave Rudolph the chance to leave the team, he better jumped at it. You gotta understand what this is like. The British have their queen. Americans have the Beatles. And Rudolph. Reindeer have the eight. I remember once when back before I joined the team, Victor was making an appearance at a benefit, and I asked for his autograph, and he misspelled my name. But for years, that autograph was my most prized possession, and when he died, I sold it, and it was enough to pay back two months back rent. Whoever is at now is one hell of a collector's item. And not just to fly with the eight, but to lead the team. Something only Dasher had ever done. <laughs> Dasher. It's like a superhero in most deer. Dasher, who flew head first in the World Trade Center, fell out of his harness. Plummet at 60 stores and then jump right back up and let the team on a fast Christmas on a record. Dasher and Rudolph. I'm not trying to make excuses. When Rudolph started telling me that Santa was hanging around. Walking him home from school, giving him presents. I knew what was going on. And when Rudolph stopped telling me about Santa and just cried, I knew what had happened. I knew I could have prevented it. But you never really want to believe something like that will happen to your own family. Until it does. I didn't let Rock go out anymore. We knew Santa waited at the door. Outside the door. He stayed home and his mother and I prayed that it was over. But when Santa Claus came into my house... When the most powerful man in the world came into my house and asked for my son, what was I supposed to do? I did the one thing no one had ever done before. Many have done since then, and most of them will brag about it for the rest of their lives. But until that day, nobody. No deer, no elf, nobody. I'd ever said no to Santa Claus. I said no to Santa Claus. He was shocked, my dill fainted, and then My dough fainted, and then he offered me money. Gifts. Reindeer things. I said no. He told me that was opening for me on the team. <laughs> that my family would never again want for food or shelter or clothing. That I and Donner, an unemployed herd deer from Fairbanks, would be one of the eight most important reindeer in the world. One of the dashers, the victors, the comets. I said no. I 
Then he told me, Did we find a place for Rudolph on the team? That Rudolph, it wasn't going to be anything. I could not have even aspired to be the miserable failure that his father was. That Rudolph, who would have been better off dead than born, was going to do something most dear can't even dream of. That for the first time in his life he would have prestige, power, that cruelly maimed as he was, he would never again want for love or affection. People write songs about him. Being red-nosed reindeer was something to be proud of. Yes, I said yes. And I listened to his screams from the next room. And I listened to his tears for years to come. But he never again cried from hunger, from loneliness, from humiliation, only from fear and pain. And eventually, after Santa lost interest in him, he didn't even cry from that. Those good years. And everyone wants to know how Donner can work for Santa Claus after what he's done to my family and to so many others. Well, the others are on their own. But I have made him pay. I made him pay me. I made him pay Rudolph. I make him pay every time someone else tells him no. And you gotta understand, I've paid too. I've paid with my son. My son who sits and stares. I've paid with my son, with my mate who left me, with my honor and self-respect. And now, when I thought it was all behind us, I am paying with my son again. My son who sits and stares, and I don't know why. Who sits and stares and sings Christmas carols. Obscene Christmas carols. He doesn't hear me when I talk. And I don't know why, because he won't tell me what's wrong. I can't ask him. And I don't know why. I don't know why. And they ask me why, and I don't know why. I don't know why.